Grand Rising, my friends. Hey there to the most beautiful subscribers in all the known universe and several universes dimensions that we are associated with closely. What is up? If you're new, what's going on? Hey, hello. Come join us. I'm going to jump into it. Uh, we're going to use Yahoo Finance, the other investing.com, I think. They start putting this big thing on the screen trying to get me to either, you know, you're using that uh, uh, blocker. Let it blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Phew. we out. We moving on. Moving on. Yahoo, they saw the future. So let's go. S&P Futures. Looking good for tomorrow. So in the Dow and the NASDAQ, it was a bad day today or, you know, all in the red today. Got trending tickers. See, I'm going to play with this. So I'm going to try to find one. We'll see if they go with this. As long as they're not trying to force you to, to pay. Look, we're not, we're not sitting here. They said, we're spending millions of dollars to do this. I, I hear you. You know what I mean? Okay. Peace. We'll see you. Market doing a little bit better. Bitcoin at 48,983. It was in uh, 49 for a lot of uh, today. You know, a little bit above where it's at now. Ethereum has uh, been maintained above 4,000, 4,049. Binance at 539. Look, if I was saying these numbers a year ago, you looked at me like I was nuts. And people talking about, oh, it's been a crash and Bitcoin's at 48,900. People be looking at you like, <gasps> <laughs> Two years ago, I was saying this in December, like Bitcoin has suffered a crash. It's down to forty eight thousand nine hundred eighty three dollars. You know, you would you would you would like crash from what? Are you kidding me? So everything is relative. The market, you know, is cycles. Solana is at one hundred and seventy eight. Cardano. One dollar thirty one cents. XRP. Eighty three cents. Avalanche jumped in front of Doge. Avalanche was balling today. It shot up almost 18%. It's 104 um, point 39. Doge at 18. Shiba Inu at four zeros 34. It is the market. It's looking a little bit better today, a little bit stronger. ETH continues to burn. You know how the game go. Here we're about that positivity, which is looking deep into yourself reaching out through electronic means to someone who means a lot to you and say hey look what i wrote about you in the comment sections of this nut bag on the internet one who is not in a financial advisor this is not medical advice this is not advice about matters of the spiritual realm this is nothing i'm not even sure if this is entertainment or anything I, I, to be quite honest, I don't know what y'all, you know, what am I doing? What y'all doing? What any of us are doing here? Let's be real. Uh, <laughs> so send this to, off to them. Maybe add that that I've been in there as well. They know they won't understand you either. So maybe don't. <laughs> uh, getting into it morgan stanley deepens crypto exposure through grayscale bitcoin trust all this saying morgan stanley giant investment bank is is getting deep into in, in, in all of the institution and i was watching someone um today i think um i'm not sure if his name is max but the guy who um founded and runs ftx the exchange i think it's max friedman he was saying look you know, yeah, is it going to be, you know, kind of on a cyclic, cyclical pattern like Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, but in reality, a lot more institutions are in, in getting in the market and that's going to keep um, deepening and deepening over time. So what is it going to look like? Who knows? And so that was kind of his thesis of, yeah, I, you know, could it be some downturns? Yeah, but in reality, it could be also periods that blow up because such and such has signed a deal to do A, B and C. So, you know. Find people that you trust who who seem to be making wise decisions. And and look, sometimes it's a bit of trust. Find smart people who are willing to share their knowledge and, and, and you know, listen. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's what I, you know, that appears to be my pattern that tries it seems to work. 
or look for it. Uh, leading Mega Bank invests in crypto through a trust for a while now through various funds. In a recent SEC filing, the bank revealed that it dramatically increases holdings in the trust. Dramatically increases holdings in the trust over the summer when it seemed like the broader market was panicking due to low prices. Of course, the wealth management firm have been filling up its bags. And guess who's filling their bags now? All the big boys. So you better be filling your bags, too. Don't be filling their bags. Don't be sitting there like, oh, God, yeah. And they're like, yes, the market's horrible. Like the Bank of England the other day saying like, well, Bitcoin theoretically can go to zero. Anything can theoretically go to zero or theoretically go to infinity. Theoretically. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at the end of the day, you can oh, theoretically, the, the value of the dollar can go to infinity. Prove me wrong. Show me how it can Get it all the way up to infinity and then show me how it can. But but do it for me. Because if you don't do it, then how can you prove to me that it didn't do it? But get 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 the dollar as close to infinity and show me that's impossible for it to reach it. That's the only way to prove it to me. You know, come on. You're nonsense. So I tell you, just because somebody says something, don't think that necessarily that, that gives it um, all the, the weight in the universe. So Morgan Stanley's always looked favorably towards the asset class when it comes to the big U.S. banks. In March 2021, the bank became the first major U.S. bank to offer Bitcoin exposure to its clients. Morgan Stanley is not stupid. They've been around for a long time and they will continue to be because of decisions like that. Mexico's third richest man advises buy Bitcoin now says U.S. increasingly look said U.S. looking increasingly like third world country. I mean, you know, it, 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 Glass houses at the end of the day, right? But you know, hey, this guy has a lot of money, and he is telling people to buy Bitcoin. Inflation, people are seeing inflation. You know, of course, that was what had to happen with the pandemic and the responses to it. And people were acting so silly, like, but I don't understand why. <laughs> okay, you know, we stopped basically uh, uh, shut down in phases. The entire global economic structure for, you know, on a rolling on a rolling scale for what months, you know, still not full back, uh, full strength or in terms of how uh, periodically people have to go ebb and flow out in terms of all the the cogs in the machine. You know, and we're not back to normal, quote unquote. So. The response to that, to, to, to keep it from it to being, you know, uh, Mad Max was going to have to be what was done, which is, hey, give everybody the false sense that all this money is out and everything is fine. And now because of that, the policy, yeah, everything is going to look crazy, you know, unless the government really makes some hard decisions and cut back and be like, all right, we need to get these things in control. How to do it? I don't know. You, you, far from listening to, to me, but, you know, crying about it and, and, and you know, almost kind of wishing that the worst happened in a way. People like to see the world burn, you know, quite honestly. And that doesn't change. Sometimes it's a bit of the kick the ladder effect where once you get to a height, you turn around and you you don't see that as a ladder of, of, of getting you there. You see it of, of how everybody will come and take yours. The enemy, how the enemy storm the gates. So you oop, kick that mug right off, you know, that the rampart had that mentality and, and they think it's justified. Because of the probably several times when individuals in positions tried to use, you know, their power against you, as opposed to seeing the, you know, as we talk here about the positive positivity, the many times that individuals have helped you to get to where you are. So. Self suturing band band aid in tech technon. Somewhere in um, Israel, if I'm not mistaken, renders medical stitches unnecessary. Sounds like awesome, right? So they got some a polymeric, uh, poly polymeric, polymeric, polymer, polymeric, polymeric. That doesn't sound right to me. I have to go look that word up. Polymeric mesh dressing that contracts the wound edges and allows skin healing. So basically, instead of using sutures, you be able to take wounds, and this bandage will be able to. And this, it, you know. That's basically what what um, stitches are doing anyway. You call it primary healing, where you get the edges close together so the skin can you know heal itself back. Versus secondary, where it's left open and has to fill in the space with um, tissue. 
So, you know, I'm guessing these bandages contract the skin, keep it there together, and also can uh, detect if infection is occurring in the uh, wound. So, moving to the, to, to the, to the, you know, I don't even know if those are the correct words. Now, we speak space age of the age. We passed that now, you know, interdimensional space, space, space. You know, we going interdimensional now. So yeah, we're moving into a post-human stage. I don't know what we're calling it. Um, the cyborg stage. Who knows? But yeah, zombie shark talking about you want to get into some crazy um uh, any cyborg age would be uh, garbage. Let's you know, getting into that uh, the hypertech, hypertech age, hypertechnical, hypertech. I don't know. Basically, what it seemed to be like hypertech age. Not that this is, but this just shows the the power of will. Zombie shark spotted still hunting for food despite missing half its body. It was being attacked, this black tip shark, by the thing by bull sharks. And when they spotted it, it still lived for 20 minutes in this state. And, and it appeared to have hunting food, you know, hunting behavior before it eventually died. That shark should be dead. <laughs> it's still, it's still going on. So I was like, is it just. Is it just it was so ornery and angry about what happened that it just wouldn't go die right away? Or I mean, look, you know, to me, yeah, this this is the 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 magnificence of life, you know, that it is able to accomplish tasks that people have no clue of or no, you know, not even an imagination to so, but I just thought it was weird in a, in a way that goes into the next story of scientists develop living robots that reproduce. You may have already heard about this. As people talked about it. Xenobots have kids. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a rap on it. So what they're calling Xenobots are um, these organisms that are made from um, skin cells. So they're biological robots, biological organization, uh, organiz organisms. And they figured that when they had them moving around in these petri dish, that they would collect other cells around and create, quote unquote, babies. But the babies were designed in a way that eventually grew to look like the parents, but would die after a generation or so. I'm just telling you what it is. I don't know. It all sounds crazy. So then they used artificial intelligence to figure out what would be the best shape for the parent to be that when it engages in that behavior and creates the baby and the baby got to look like a parent, it would be able to survive, that'd be able to create further generations. And our artificial intelligence was able to solve that issue. <laughs> so you really want to get crazy now. So it can gather hundreds of single cells similar to baby xenobots. After a few days, the offspring of all the look and move just like their parents. The prodigy can repeat the process over again. Thought for a while, we worked out ways that life can reproduce or replicate, but there's some never observed before. Um, scraped from frog the, the millimeter wise xenobots are assembled from living cells scraped from frog embryos combined a petri dish their lives are very different from their amphibious ancestors otherwise saying they would be sitting either on the outside of a tap or their skin cells keeping out pathogens and redistributing uh, redistributing the mucus so probably um, some squamous and some uh, mucosal skin cells so they maybe use kind of like paper uh, two sets of different skin cells and um, repurpose them. So, but the system only dies soon after. Independently, a xenobot can produce children, but the system only dies after to get the parents to see their children grow up. The researchers turned to AI team use evolutionary algorithm to test billions of potential body shapes and simulation. The system was designed to find forms that would be effective for the self-replication method. And it said one of his eye-catching creations resembled Pac-Man. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Their children then build grandchildren who build great-grandchildren who build great-great-grandchildren. What does this mean? You know, my friends and I were discussing this amongst ourselves in terms of 
you know, is this life? Would it, you know, I'll just give a little bit of it and not much. A thought to leave with is that, okay, you know, one of the discussion points, give me a second, was that, hey, look, it's technology. We have to go and see what does that look like? You know, it's, it's discovery. Wow. Wonderment. That's how we should approach it. Right. Another viewpoint, a bit of, let's just say, concern saying, you know, well, look, look at us. You know, we, we so warlike and violent that what we're going to create is going to be warlike and violent, too. Right. Look, look at what we create. You know, look at us. And I was like, hey, that's a good point. Look at us. What does it say about our creator then? Is that, you know, can you look at us and then judge our creator based on us, the creation? What if we're the opposite of what our creator anticipated? What if we create the opposite of what we are? You know, so it's, but at the end of the day, as I've always said, is unfortunately we don't have the luxury of having these theoretical discussions because they're going, once this take, you know, is known it can be done, best believe there are going to be groups around this world and other countries that are going to do all they can with this information. And we will have to as well. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is, it is what it will be, you know, just like the discovery of the warp bubble we talked about yesterday. It was yesterday, right? Yeah. Um, you, you think other individuals and in, in nation states with that te te uh, technological capability is not going to uh, try to replicate those studies and further go along that path? If not already, this may all be a red herring that this technology has already been worked on and showing like, oh yeah, well, you know, hey, uh, uh, you know, we, yeah, we know how to do some of this stuff, you know, so we'll see. But so that's what the scientists develop, living robots that can reproduce and what they're doing now. A lot of it is just proof of concept. You know, it's people are like, oh, well, what is it doing? It's like it's not doing nothing, but exactly what, you, you know, they were just working on creating these biological um organisms that can be controlled or that that have you know volition thing that's the real question what are how are these things going around and even have come up with the capacity to say hey let me start building other parts of me what other stuff are they doing you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying to where they get to the part of saying let me build some of you know that that wasn't even things that the i don't believe that the scientists yeah, the scientists didn't seem like it, you know, uh, designed them to go, to go assemble these babies together. They, they discovered that the machines could, could gather hundreds of them and assemble them into, into babies. This is something that as they were going like, wait a sec, look what's happening. So, you know, that was another part that I was like, yeah, and, and, you know, there's been um, papers and discussions that artificial intelligence create other artificial intelligences. You know, separate from what um, what was created in the original programming, and then you know it's so the future is probably past us. I'll go say you know, it is the future is now. Future is past. It. You know, get your head in the game and be ready to 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 uh, partake or get ran over. Basically, not to be harsh in that uh, in that last bit. You know, because here if you here we you understanding where your place is and. Getting ready to see where you live at in that world. Not ready. You, deciding where you're going to live at in that world is better to say. I'm just now. Nah, I'm just rambling. Let me leave you with. I love you. You love you. God loves us, and that's all that matters.